What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be building this awesome solar kiln. This uses the power of the sun to dry wood and it dries it pretty fast. Let's go ahead and get started with the project. I started by ripping down some 1x6s into sections that were 2.5 inches wide. I used these throughout the entire project to do all the framing for this and I had these left over from my old shop so they were free. <laughs> Once I had some of my rips, I could attach some of them together at a 90 degree angle. These are going to be the legs, so putting them at a 90 makes them very strong. I clamped them all together and drove in some screws from the edge. After that, I went over to the miter saw and cut it up into all the legs. So you can see I've got my four corners cut here, all at 45 degrees. So my, my little kiln is going to be 18 inches wide, and I think it's going to be 4 feet long. So these are not in the right position yet, but I'm glad I got all these cut, and they line up and everything, so I think we're good. I once again headed right over to the miter saw to cut supports and braces. So I'm using the same 2.5 inch stock that I made the legs out of, and I'm just cutting them to fit inside the legs. I'm once again using pocket screws for this build. I absolutely love pocket screws for something like this where it doesn't really matter what it looks like, you know, it's just gotta be strong and it's gotta work. Pocket screws are a great option. You may have noticed that I cut two little three inch spacer blocks and that's because we want these supports to be perfectly 90 degrees to the legs. If these aren't perfectly 90 degrees, the panels that we're gonna cut later won't fit. So the spacers made it really easy to set my brace on top and clamp it in place. Putting these 45 degree braces in place was definitely a little bit tricky, so I decided to clamp one end and screw that end in place. That way it wouldn't move. These braces help keep the legs nice and parallel. So for these next stretcher pieces that I want to attach, I need to cut a 45 degree angle on the edge of it, so that way our roof comes down nice over top. So I'm gonna go over to the table saw and bevel my blade to 45 degrees, and then we'll make the rip. I would definitely recommend clamping pieces in place anytime you're using pocket screws. Pocket screws, the way that they're designed, definitely tend to try and pull wood in different directions and it won't be flush. So definitely use clamps when using pocket screws. It really helps and it's just like an extra set of hands. Well, my joint here looks really, really good, but I messed up on this side and I put the pocket screws on the wrong side. <sighs> With the framing done, I could head over to the table saw and start cutting panels. I could pocket screw those into place using some one inch pocket screws, which is what you use for half inch material. And now you can see why making those braces nice and parallel and perpendicular to everything was so critical because these panels would not fit in place otherwise. The main thing is done, all the plywood is done with 100% scrap wood. I cut these strips of, well, one by material, and they are going to go on the bottom like this, and then we'll cut some slats to fit in the bottom. We want air to be able to get up through there, so that's why I'm doing slats and not just a solid bottom. Okay, so the bottom is in, and you can see I left 
a little bit of a gap here and that's so that air can flow if i need to come back and put like a, a hardware cloth mesh over this to keep animals and things out i will uh, but for now i'm just going to leave it like that so the entire thing is pretty much done we just need to install the roof and speaking of the roof i picked up this sheet of uh, clear plastic roofing at home depot and that's going to work really well that's what the plans call for so that's what i'm going to use I added this little shelf here, and that's just going to give me a little bit more storage space in here. Uh, but we need to paint the entire inside of this thing black, because that's going to really help attract the heat and warm it up inside. Whenever painting indoors, I like to wear my mask, which blocks out all of the fumes. And I also like to turn on my air filter. Take the proper precautions and paint outside if you can. Be careful here and don't crank down the screws too far or you could crack the plastic. Don't ask me how I know. Okay, so you may have noticed I got a nice pretty coat of barn red paint on there. It's the same paint that's on my shop, same paint that we put on the trailer build a couple of weeks ago. And I also got that roof on there. And yes, I know it's sideways. I did that on purpose. We really want the air to be able to come up to the bottom and then escape out the top with all that moisture. So uh, the air will be able to escape out of here. And it was just easier doing it sideways because I could do it all in one piece and that's what I really wanted. So you can see just to open it up, you can come over here and lift up because it's nice and flexible. And it's been raining for the past week or so, so as soon as it gets warm and sunny, I'm going to go put this thing out in the sun and uh, we should start drying wood. So I wanted to talk quickly about the solar kiln, kind of how it was developed. This thing was made by Virginia Tech, which is a local college. And they designed this thing, engineered this thing, they did a ton of testing, and I first saw it at my local lumberyard. My uh, lumberyard had this thing, they had actually had a couple of them, and I saw it and I knew I had to build it eventually. So their buildings were really big, I think they were like 16 feet long, so this one's a lot smaller, I just scaled it down. Um, but a couple interesting points I want to make about the solar kiln. Um, the roof angle is important, just check your latitude and read the article that they posted about it, it'll tell you everything you need to know. Um, this thing will dry wood quickly, so a one inch board will lose 5% of its moisture a day in this thing um, because I think it gets 50 or 60 degrees warmer inside the kiln than outside. That's what the guy at the lumber yard told me and that's pretty incredible. Just using the power from the sun you can heat wood relatively fast. I know he can heat a four quarter board up in this thing and uh, it'll be drying about a week and a half or two weeks, so that's pretty good. I will leave the original Virginia Tech article down in the description box below. There's a ton of information, all sorts of diagrams and, and percents and everything, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you want to build one, definitely go and check out that article. Guys, thank you so much for watching this week's video. This thing turned out incredible. I have it up here on the back deck. I think it's going to get quite a bit of sun here, and I think it's going to be a good place for it. It's close to the house, it's close to the shop, it's very convenient, and if I need to access it pretty quickly, I can. Again, I will leave the full link to the Virginia Tech article down in the description box below if you're interested in reading that. I would highly recommend building one of these. I just got this thing put up on the deck about 15 minutes ago, and it's already 100 degrees inside of here, so that's pretty good. Right now, it's about 65 degrees outside, so it definitely gets pretty warm in there, and this is not even the hottest day that we get here. If you don't already know, I have an Instagram, so I would highly encourage you to go check out my Instagram. I post a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff on there and a lot of stuff that doesn't get put up on my YouTube channel over on my Instagram. Also, be sure to check out my website, SethCustomCreations.com. I've got products on there, more information about me, some other stuff you might like. So I would definitely encourage you to go and check out the website. The link to that will be in the description box below as well. Lastly, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you go ahead and get subscribed. Also, make sure you hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video. I'll see you guys next week.